Hey, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining. So as we've discussed in many of my other videos, there is a rush towards EVs, electric vehicles, and it is basically because of the mandate that the federal government is putting on car makers to force them to go towards electric vehicles and put, you know, really unbelievable restrictions on internal combustion engines so that they really have no incentive to build those anymore. But again, uh, we've discussed this many times. I think the market should decide. I was recently at the DC Auto Show, and I was able to take a look at the an electric vehicle that is based on hydrogen. It's the hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle. I had a chance to speak to one of the Toyota representatives regarding the Toyota Mirai, which is their hydrogen fuel cell electric vehicle. Hi, I'm, I'd like to ask you some questions about this hydrogen fuel cell vehicle. Yes. Uh, what's your name, by the way? My name's Josh. 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 Yeah. And you're with Toyota? I am a product specialist for Toyota, yeah. We do car shows for them, so I'm part of the product team. Great, fantastic. And I'm Voff. Hi. Nice, nice to meet to you. Meet you. Yeah. So I'm not really a fan of battery electrics. I think that the infrastructure's not there. There, there are many, many problems. Sure. There's range anxiety. But I think that hydrogen fuel cell is kind of the way to go. So tell me a little about this and... So this is the Mirai, which in Japanese means future. Mm -hmm. um, we have been, this is its third generation, actually. We've been selling them in California for quite some time. Um, the hydrogen program in Toyota has actually been going on longer than our hybrid program, just as they started about the same time. So we've had them for a long time. We've driven over a million miles in them. This one's range is 402 miles. The way it works, uh, is you put compressed hydrogen gas in the tanks that goes through a fuel cell and creates two things electricity that powers the wheels and water which is its byproduct so so there's no there are no batteries that have to be changed at any time such as with the battery electric vehicles well there is a battery there is a traction battery so we're still doing regenerative braking to help improve your mileage but uh, nothing huge like a it's not going all the way across the vehicle it's about that big okay. so you do have one like a hybrid but not like an all electric so kilowatt size of the battery do you, do you know that offhand uh, or look it up i don't have it offhand uh i'd have to i'll look it up for you okay, but i'm sure it's yeah, it's, it's much smaller cheaper to yeah significantly lower than you would in an all electric sure, yeah sure. yeah now, I used to live in California. I, I lived in La Crescenta, right like, next door was La Cañada, yeah. and there was a hydrogen filling station there. It was one of the, for, the few I've ever seen. But what about outside of California? So Cal, outside of California, outside of the country, we have lots of other countries that have the infrastructure. Within the United States itself, Hawaii is right now the only other state that we sell them in because the dealership there wanted them, so they built their own hydrogen stations. Toyota was building hydrogen stations to go from New York up to Boston, up the eastern seaboard there. Uh, they've built the stations and are waiting approval. I don't know where that stands. Um, so once those stations would be open, then they could sell them in those states. It's just all waiting for the infrastructure. I see. Now, what about the cost per mile compared to a gasoline car and compared to charging at a public charging station for a battery electric? Yeah, it's really hard to nail that down. Um, the range is really wide. There are so many ways to produce hydrogen, and because we're so early days in the production of hydrogen, it's just across the board. So what Toyota did to compensate for that was to give you free fuel wow. for the vehicle, so you didn't have to worry about that. Um, the the way that we make the fuel is actually quite fascinating. If you want to do a deeper dive, or anyone wants to do a deeper dive, YouTube videos through Toyota hydrogen, you can see that they've taken a cattle ranch and used the methane to produce hydrogen. 
They're using the, LA, the port of LA to produce hydrogen. So they're actually cleaning to make the fuel and then having a clean byproduct of water. It's really something pretty amazing. That is. Anything else you'd like to tell us about this car or hydrogen power fuel cells in general? Uh, they, they have used these in, semi, in, in full semis, so that's what's pulling a lot of the freight around in the port of Los Angeles. So they've got a couple of those trucks down there. So it is really very viable for long-range trucking and for forklifts, or you'll see fuel cells in factories and things like that. So it's a technology that's been going on and is expanding. Just within the automotive industry, it's in still a bit of a niche market. Right. Excellent. Hey, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Absolutely. So I want to talk a little bit about how a hydrogen fuel cell electric works. This is very basic. This is not super technical. But basically, you fill up with hydrogen, and the hydrogen is kept in really strongly reinforced tanks in the vehicle. And then there is a fuel cell, uh, in this case in the front of the car, and that fuel cell uh, mixes the hydrogen and oxygen and creates electricity. The electricity then is directed to the electric motors in the car, either one or two, depending on the vehicle, and that makes the car go. So instead of the electricity coming from batteries, they're actually coming from the fuel cell that is creating the electricity. I just wanted to reiterate here, I'm not necessarily advocating for fuel cell electric vehicles. Uh, I'm, I'm only advocating for those over battery electrics because battery electric actually, and some people don't realize this, is old technology. And the fuel cell, hydrogen fuel cell electrics is newer technology. And there are so many more advantages of that over the battery electrics. So I prefer internal combustion engines. That's what I drive. They are so clean compared to what they used to be. The, the, in the late 60s and early 70s, they were so much dirtier than they are now. The vehicles now, because of computer controls and computer control systems, fuel injection and so forth, are 99% cleaner than they used to be. So they're considered PZEVs, practically zero emission vehicles. They are so clean. They run great. Gasoline has the, the, the most energy content per gallon of almost anything else, so they're just fantastic. But, you know, if, if you have to go electric as an alternative, not as a replacement, but as an alternative, I could see doing it with a hydrogen fuel cell electric because it doesn't have all the disadvantages of the battery electrics. So one of the disadvantages at least right now, of the hydrogen fuel cell electrics is we don't have the infrastructure. We don't have hydrogen filling stations everywhere. So getting the infrastructure in place is going to be a challenge. But I say no more than a challenge than getting these charging stations set up. If you have to put charging stations on the highways, the, the amount of power they use is equivalent to a football stadium, a large football stadium, or a small town. So that's that's stretching the infrastructure the the power generation infrastructure as well as setting up those 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 stations to be able to charge vehicles so to set up the infrastructure for hydrogen filling stations is very similar to gas stations in that all you need is tanks to hold the hydrogen so trucks would come and deliver the hydrogen into the tanks and then you would have pumps that pump the the hydrogen from the tanks into your vehicles so again, very easy setting up those, that infrastructure as compared to electric infrastructure where again, you, it, it's like setting up the electricity in a small town. You'd have to run the cables and the transformers and you know, everything that is in, that's entailed in setting up big, huge electric power stations. And for big trucks, trucking, class, class eight trucks, I believe they are, they're t they were talking about that, having battery electrics for, for big semi-trucks, semi, semi uh, trucks. and that's not going to work because, number one, you know, those semis, they're moving day and night, and you have to just pull over and fill up and then go. You may have multiple drivers, you know, maybe two drivers in the truck, so one can be sleeping while the other one is going. But with battery electrics, <laughs> you're not going to be able to do that. You're going to have to pull over on a regular basis and take, some, take hours to charge up that truck. In addition to that, if you've seen truck stops on the side of the road, I'm sorry, not truck stops, truck way stations, you, they have to pull over to those way stations and 
it they are taxed depending on the weight of the vehicle. Batteries in trucks, in semis, weigh a ton. And, and that's, I don't mean a ton, I mean multi-tons. And then they would be taxed based on that. So I'm sure they get, they're going to work on something. But also the reason they're taxed based on weight is because the weight of those heavy trucks wears down the, the highways at a much quicker rate than if you're just driving cars on them. So that's why they're taxed. That money's supposed to go back into the highway fund to repair the highways. Well, those battery electric trucks are so much heavier than just, just a semi with stuff in it. So that's another disadvantage. So the trucking trucking industry is looking into hydrogen fuel cell trucks and setting up the infrastructure on the highways and byways of this land for hydrogen is much easier than setting up than setting up electric filling stations, electric power stations, which would be, you know, setting up cables and making sure there's enough generation and and out in the rural areas there may not be. So it's much easier to set up those hydrogen filling stations at truck stops. Then that could be a start for people that want to get a passenger vehicle that is that is a hydrogen fuel cell electric because then they would have the trucking infrastructure to fill hydrogen trucks and they could also do that with cars. So that's it for now. I just wanted to give you a glimpse of an in-person hydrogen fuel cell electric. I would love to get in and drive one. I'm sure they would be very similar in feel to a battery electric. But the source of the power instead of the batteries, it's the hydrogen fuel cell in the car. So in any event, we'll talk about this in future videos, I'm sure. Thanks for joining today. If you haven't already done so, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and hit the notification bell. Those things help a lot. Take care. We'll see you next time.